uh, I got involved in film production and uh, in particular short films uh, and one of the things that was was really amazing to me because I had been in technology and I'd also been a writer and editor is that in particular when you're on a film crew and I find that a lot here in, in Silicon Valley which I don't necessarily find in Hollywood per se is you've got a team like you do in this room and uh, I remember one engineer telling me he, he was a grip on the film he's like it's the only place you can have you know a super creative person like an actor let's say the right brain and, and, and an engineer all in the same place at the same time and, mm -hmm. and you're all working together and I know that happens in a lot of companies here of course but oftentimes you're siloed you know with with offices and departments and things mm -hmm. like that and so I want to encourage you guys uh, I'm kind of more right now more on the the little you know kind of storytelling side is to to kind of become a part of it even if you're really techie and you don't consider yourself a creative storyteller um, you can be part of that um, here in the Bay Area and so Sheridan and I uh, uh, together with a couple co-founders we were finding we were involved in a group called Film Angels um, who was trying to connect a lot of people in Hollywood and here too with with angels to kind of make these stories happen and a group called the Institute for International Film and Finance and um, we were finding that, you know, unlike Hollywood, you don't have an infrastructure here where you can actually meet and greet and, and tell stories and pull things together. And I know Jenny Lynn, for example, is doing stories on TV, and, and Shama here has helped us at the Irish Institute, um, you know, kind of tell that those stories as well. And um, the thing that's uh, amazing about the barriers, it, it is so rich in content providers, but also the technical side of things, and you really don't have that. I know it's a stereotype, but you don't have that in Hollywood. And um, so we, we are working a lot with uh, Marin County, you've got uh, the Kerner folks up there who are all these animators, there are about 200 of them that used to be model makers for example, uh, folks uh, used to be Disney uh, in Novato, uh, 300 animators up there that are no longer uh, working because they don't have jobs and uh, we were finding all these folks that really needed, needed work but they were talented if they're like, uh, you know, uh, Howard and, and, and other folks uh, where you've got uh, a day job in the technical field, you might be a musician on the side or an artist, and I find a lot of folks, particularly that are technical, that have that mm -hmm. uh, with you and, um, or David. And so um, what we decided to do was found you know, an organization, it's not necessarily a nonprofit yet, but it's called Renaissance San Francisco Bay Area. And its uh, mission is to, you know, originally Sheridan was actually the, the brainchild of this, where to get kind of the Medici model where you're, you're finding these Michelangelos and da Vinci's and such and, and hopefully maybe getting the angels and the VCs here and, and other folks maybe it's crowdsourcing or crowdfunding you know to to you know get some funding to these folks so they can actually no longer be starving artists and and, and get out there and um, even if you do it on the side you know so uh, that's kind of what we're all about and trying to uh, find those storytellers and um, and such, and at the same time, the, the fabulous thing that's happening kind of at the same time is this convergence of transmedia, where you have a lot of technical things happening, you've got storytelling that used to be traditional, uh, I used to be in book publishing, uh, I worked for Dave Eggers, I don't know if you guys are familiar with 826 Valencia and the, the wonderful things they're doing there, and um, you know, things used to be traditional, if you wrote a book, you wrote a book, if you told a film, you did that, um, now of course with gaming and all sorts of things, you are integrating those, those uh, different aspects into kind of one brand, so to speak. And one of the best examples I've seen lately, uh, which I think you guys would appreciate, um, there's a, uh, a woman who's a Stanford professor, she's a uh, doctor, and she is also a filmmaker, and um, she recently did a film that was actually on PBS, where she uh, went with a partner to Calcutta, India, and you had these wonderful kids, a gentleman who was doing an after-school program there in one of the slums there, and um, these children were seeing that their siblings and their younger cousins and such were uh, di not necessarily dying, but they were being crippled by polio still in this mm -hmm. day and age, and I think that it was a 40% rate of vaccination that these kids were having, and so these kids on their own decided that they were, you know, they're in junior high and high school, going to create a program where they're going to solve this, and uh, they uh, we're going to also somehow use technology, today's technology, even though they themselves were not yet on Google Earth, and they, they figured that out, and they were going to, they were determined they were going to get themselves on Google Earth, um, to go out and use, actually, iPhones um, to, to do a lot of this stuff. So the, the first part of the project was to actually get the kids vaccinated. So they were going to pick up the, the little, you know, younger children who were with their mothers during the day, who didn't have time to get off work to go get these three vaccinations, and they kind of did this program. In the meantime, 
they decided that number one, as I said before, they were gonna put themselves on Google Earth, so they did that. And the second thing was that they were going to, they were noticing that the, the garbage was not being collected and they were also getting a lot of diseases that way. And so they decided to track this over a year of time and uh, they found that um, the only time of the year that garbage would be actually collected in this part of uh, town was in September. And the kids figured out also that, wait, that's when uh, the politicians uh, actually are running for office. Mm -hmm. So they tracked this, they graphed it, and they literally took it to the government uh, in India. And they got this thing passed, and now the garbage is collected and such. Wow. So just, it's amazing things that, you know, technology is doing, and these are real stories, you know, that are being, you know, counted for and, um, and, and brought back as well. And, and the other one I'll leave you with is um, a woman who is here, and she is from Kentucky in particular, and she is doing a film called Deep Down, uh, which was also uh, having to be on PBS, and what they ended up doing was she had a challenge from... I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Bay Area Video Coalition. It's up in San Francisco, and it's similar to the Media Center here in Palo Alto. And uh, to do a project that was um, essentially inspired by a documentary, but had you know kind of a transmedia um, arm to it. And so she got some game developers together and decided, you know, uh, they were dealing with essentially the, the mountaintop uh, mining in, in Kentucky and how that was affecting their environment and such. Uh, dramatically, and as it so happens, which I didn't realize, I think half the the energy in the U.S. that's consumed is from the Appalachian Mountains, and so it, it really, truly is an American story that we don't necessarily know about, you know, per se. And so uh, they decided to do a game on Second Life, and this game um, was a very sophisticated game, and and ended up being actually, you know, kind of part of the movie too. But the beautiful thing about it, and what I want to put out to you guys and see if you can do different things, because I know for NASA you guys are working on different things and, and different people trying to get different things done, is to kind of you know, use storytelling to, to reach out to different audiences that you normally wouldn't be able to, to get you know, reach from. Because this particular documentary filmmaker was like, you know, most people do not want to see my movie. They're not interested in Kentucky, per se. They're from around here. Um, it's a dry subject. Uh, maybe on Capitol Hill, they're interested in, you know, mining and what have you and the, and the effects of that. But um, she said, you know, it was phenomenal how once they went to the gaming side of things, um, for an educational purposes, it was, uh, once people saw it on PBS, they disseminated it across the United States. Kids are now using these avatars to actually go in and simulate um, their as if they're in that town and how things and resources are working and how it really affects them and uh, again using it as an educational tool. So um, so again I leave you with that and uh, we'd love to hear you know we'd love to hear your personal stories and uh, you know how we can help you or how we can help each other you know with storytelling in the present day.